Hey, 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 welcome back hippies. It's Courtney Shavante here back with another absolutely beautiful and stunning tutorial. Before we get started, do make sure you hit that subscribe button for me if you have not yet. And also hit that notification bell so that way you don't miss anything that I do put out for you guys moving forward. All right, so today we are gonna be making a spiritual bay wall hanging. So she is going to be absolutely stunning as you already saw, but I'm gonna show you how we built her up layer by layer. So first, of course, you're gonna go ahead and prep your mold and your resin, make sure everything's nice and clean. And what I did to start out is I put it a layer of clear resin into the mold. I didn't use a lot, I just made sure it was enough to completely cover it. And then I went in with my heat gun because I want to thin the resin as much as possible. And I also want to make sure I pop all those bubbles. So it does not hurt to also go around the edges with a toothpick or a stir stick or something like that. And dig into those etchings just to make sure there aren't any of those little fine micro bubbles trapped in there. And that really helps out. All right, so spray it with a little bit of alcohol and that'll help eliminate the rest of the bubbles that may be remaining. From here, we're going to start with placing our inserts. So the first thing we're gonna place are these butterflies. Um, these butterflies are absolutely beautiful. I love how they look in finished products, especially with flowers and everything. I just make sure I push them down firmly and then I'm just going to keep pressing and pressing to make sure they're to the front and how I need them. And then uh, the next layer I'm going to work on are the flower layers. So I have three of these orange flowers. I forgot what they're called, um, but yes, I just got three orange flowers that are already pre-pressed and I'm making sure that those are pushed forward and that I pushed all the bubbles out from underneath each flower. I put a little bit of resin on top of the flower and that helps to just eliminate um, bubbles from building up underneath so that way when you do demold it you don't have a lot of holes in your casting because we all know that's really annoying especially when it's getting to the point where you're painting your etchings and things like that because you have to be very careful of where the paint falls so we're just gonna go ahead and do the same exact thing for this last flower here I'm just gonna go ahead and um, you know press that down make sure I get all the bubbles out and make sure I just push all these inserts as close to the front of this mold as I can so you just want you you want very minimal resin at, um, in the front of these inserts because that's what makes them slide all right, so the next thing I'm doing is I have some tumbled turquoise that I'm going to be placing at the bottom of this mold. Um, so you just want one layer, you don't want them super thick, so I tried to pick out some of my smaller stones so I can make sure that they are laid in a way that they will not be poking out of the mold later. So just get those arranged how you want it. push them into place don't be afraid to use that stir stick to really get in there and you also want to move each rock abound a bit just to make sure no air bubbles got um underneath there or anything so the next thing we're going to put down are our leaves so i put down the leaves last because they tend to move a bit so i wanted to um like really focus on them and make sure that um placing the stones and the crystals those didn't force the leaves to move around so as you can see these can break apart a bit i'm just using my stir stick to kind of manipulate the leaves where they fall and try to um still put it around where it would be even though it's broken off all right if anything else slides just go ahead and push it back into place and you know just keep pressing making sure that you're getting all the bubbles out you cannot overpress. So I'm taking this glitter mix that I made. If you guys would like to me to make some glitter mixes for you guys, it can definitely be done. Let me know what colors and stuff that you would like to see below. Um, but I'm just spooning this glitter mix on top of these stones. And then from there, I'm going to use my stir stick to just add a bit of resin on top so that way I can manipulate it a bit better. So you're literally just dipping the stick and like drizzling it over the turquoise and the glitter as I'm doing. And then I am going to also use that stick to kind of push the, uh, I'm sorry, first we're going to... <laughs> 
Uh, first, we're going to um, add a little bit of glitter to the top as well. So I like to put it around the butterflies to make them look a little bit more magical and everything. Um, I try to concentrate the glitter into certain areas versus having it so distributed out because that's not the look I'm going for with this particular thing. So you see me take my actual toothpick. This is what I'm using to manipulate the glitter with um, because it helps to kind of push everything around. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to have moving that around so it doesn't look like it's so clumped up. I want it to look a little bit more randomized and everything. Alright, so after we let that cure for about 12 hours or so, we are going to go ahead and mix up our copper layer. So I just went ahead and got this copper color mica powder. I am being very generous with the amount of mica powder I am adding because I do not have this color in an opaque alcohol ink. But these metallic colors tend to show very, very well. So I'm not too concerned, but I did um, make sure to like kind of double the amount that I typically use. Coming in with that heat gun because it's just making the mixing a whole lot easier it thins the resin out and also makes sure that any air bubbles that may clump in with that mica powder is released so after i get that stirred up nicely i concentrate over the turquoise first because that's more than likely where any bubbles would form if they were to form all right yeah just push the resin into the crystals and everything use that stir stick make sure you got it in there really really well and any bubbles that would be trapped make sure you have they have the opportunity to come to the top forward and whatnot i'm adding a bit more um resin into my mix i'm just mixing that up because i didn't want to make this layer thicker than what i thought i did um so just add a bit more and i'm making sure i pour it all around so that way it's not a lighter color just in one area I'm just pushing that all around and making sure that I got this nice flush um, background. Now the back still isn't completely full so I do want you guys to be mindful of that. Um, what I did was I went ahead and like filled it to where it was almost full but it can still fit um, a clear layer in there pretty well. So spray with alcohol and let that stand and cure for a couple hours. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add on that clear layer that I was talking about. So we're just going to be adding a very thin layer on here of this resin. So that way we can go ahead and make sure that it has a nice flush back. Since we are going to be turning this into a wall hanging. Um, I want to make sure there's no chance of any color or anything um, being marked on anyone's wall or anything like that. So yeah, just make sure you drizzle it all around, push the resin all the way towards the edges so that way it reaches all the way to the edge of the mold and spray alcohol to release any bubbles that may form. From here, you're going to let that stand 12 hours and it should be just about fully cured um, and everything. It may have a little bit of tack to it, but um, you should be fine. So go ahead and wiggle that from your mold. Release your casting from the mold by pulling at the edges first. I'm also pulling off any excess resin pieces that you may see formed there and everything. Alright, so just keep pulling, pulling, pulling. Um, you can use some type of scraper tool or a weeding tool or something along those lines. Um, I actually don't recommend this way, to be honest. I have so many cuts on my fingers, guys. Like, <laughs> so yeah like the resin it will cut um because that meniscus effect will you know create that sharp edge sometimes but this is how our baby looks so she looks absolutely beautiful fresh out in the molds like you really keep her like this if you want to but we're not basic so we're not doing that here what i'm doing now is i'm just going to go ahead and paint some of this white acrylic paint using my paintbrush into these etchings i'm making sure i push the paint in there nicely um be generous um you don't have to be overly generous but just make sure that it's actually sinking into where those etchings are because that's really important as you go you'll realize that as the um acrylic paint kind of falls into the etchings and everything so there may be some holes and places that are lacking so just make sure you're going back over and not missing anything Yeah, 
this so I'm making sure that I go over as well because the acrylic paint does dry pretty quickly um, so I'm just going over it again because like I said those little holes can be there I'm making sure they're nice and filled so I'm going to let that acrylic paint dry completely and then I'm going to take a damp rag and spray that with some alcohol I'm using 99.1 percent alcohol and I am just wiping at that and you can see how easily it removes the paint from those edges and ed um, from the, the excess paint. And it sped up, but it is still super, super simple. I didn't have to put like just so much elbow grease into this because the white acrylic paint is actually pretty easy to remove. Do make sure you go around those edges as well and don't miss any spots. Um, as you can see where some of those air bubbles did form because sometimes like air bubbles will form a resin no matter what you do. Because we all know I take a lot of steps to prevent these bubbles. But they will still form and it's okay. It's easy to clean up a few versus a lot. So we're just going to keep going over using this rag and everything. Making sure that we get as much as we can from those big blotchy areas because it's just not very attractive on the final piece. And make sure you're cleaning up any streaks as you go too. Alright, so for those tiny little holes that formed, you're going to just take a regular toothpick and you can get in there and just like kind of dig it out once it's dry. Um, it's pretty easy and it does not scratch the resin and even if it does, it doesn't quite matter because we are going to be adding a doming layer onto this baby. So I'm also going across the front as well making sure that I get any that I might miss in there. In the front, the holes are a bit smaller so I got my weeding tool. Be careful with this because this is one of the things that I stabbed my finger with that I was telling you guys about. So yeah, but it does get in there very well. Alright, so the next step to prepare is we are going to be adding a layer of liquid latex onto the back of this casting. And we also are going to rub it onto the sides as well. What this is going to do is it's going to protect um, the back and the sides for when we do that doming layer so that way we don't have all those drippings and everything coming across because again unattractive and that's not what we're going for. Art is not perfect but I'm going to get it as perfect as I can okay. So yeah it's okay to use your finger this is non-toxic a lot of people actually use this for special effect makeup as well. Um, I don't really dabble in that so so much anymore but hey if you guys are interested in the video i can definitely show you some fantasy makeup that i've done before um but yeah just let me know so after you go ahead and get that done i'm just going to go ahead and transfer that over onto here i'm also going to clean off that front side so that way the latex doesn't dry there and then we're gonna let it dry completely after you do that just go ahead and get it set up on some doming blocks or some cups or whatever you use and then you're just going to add a nice clear thin even resin so what I'm doing is I add very 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 little resin and then I spread it out as much as much as I can and then I come in and I fill the holes up with just a bit so that way I can make sure it's going all the way to the edges because although we did protect it using that liquid latex it's very you know it just makes the job harder if you use a whole lot of resin because you're going to have even more drippage and the liquid latex is only so thick so like you still want to be mindful of the amount of resin that you are putting onto the top on this doming layer but as you can see i'm using my spatula to go all the way around to the edges making sure i don't miss any spots because like i said this is the top top coat here guys so this is the one that you want to pay the absolute most attention to so this is why i'm really taking my time here and just making sure i got everything where i need it and you also want to make sure that this layer is bubble free as well so i'll be spraying with the alcohol spray that i am always using and then you can kind of look over you know move around at different angles to make sure it's completely full in the light so after curing you are going to pull the liquid latex off of the um resin casting and as you can see it helps protect like i was telling you guys about and then from here we can just go ahead and pull off the extra drippings you can use tweezers for this step as well that may make it a lot easier um you can bring that weeding tool back in too and that will help get some of the pieces that did dry 
closer towards the front so that we can get um, that liquid latex out from underneath the little pieces towards the front as well. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> All right, so what we did next was I went ahead and got my hand drill and I just drilled a hole into the middle. Now it did get a little ghetto over here. So um, my hand drill, the hand drill itself isn't broken, but this little gold bit that I used to, well, the gold piece that I used to place the bits into, um, then that got stretched out. So it's not really holding it firmly the way it's supposed to so it's no match for this resin right now basically so i had to come in old school with the hand drill and i'm just drilling a hole in there and i'm not gonna lie <laughs> this part does take a minute but you can definitely you know get it to work and get it in there just put some tv on pop some netflix on or something like that I'm actually going to make sure that I, you know, get in there as deep as I need to because we're going to be placing key rings in here. So you do want to make sure the hole is fairly deep. Now this is just like kind of what I'm doing here. I'm not going to um, continue on camera with the full steps because it took a while. So yeah, I just repeated that on the other side as well. So now we're taking our key rings here and our pliers and you're just going to twist the key ring into those pre-drilled holes that you made so you should have three in total um one on each side and one in the middle that first hole that we did so just twist those in there they should go in there fairly easily you hit that subscribe button yet sis if not get to it you know you love it here All right, so from here, what we're gonna do is we're just going to go ahead and measure out um, a piece of this rhinestone chain here because this is going to be what we use for like the little dangly part of the wall decor. So after I get that measured out, I'm just placing it up against the string so I can cut another equal piece and make sure those are the same size because you need two of those. And what I'm doing is I'm just getting the these little I have no idea what these are called guys but I'm getting this little piece of jewelry finding added on to the cup chain and then I th actually I think it's called a cup chain clasp but don't quote me on that um, but yeah I'm just getting that added on here and everything and I'm using my pliers to kind of squeeze that into place and that's how it looks it basically turns the chain into it gives it like a little loop so that way you will be able to attach it onto the um the key ring even easier so i'm sorry the screw key look y'all these jewelry findings like they all have very similar names and everything and it is very hard not to get mixed up when you literally use all of them but <laughs> just like look at the pieces that i'm talking about and type in jewelry findings when you're looking and they usually come up all together when you search one anyway but yeah um so you just want to again repeat the same thing for that second chain that we um cut and you're just going to make sure that you turn that into nice little chain with a loop so from here we are going to be taking our jump rings i tried this size first but it was giving me some problem i don't remember exactly what size that is looking at it now i would say it's probably about probably about three millimeters or so so that one may was a little too small so i went ahead and jumped up to the i think it's either four probably the four millimeter because it's not that much bigger but yeah, I got like the four millimeter jump ring. I'm just gonna open that up and attach these jump rings to the screw key on one end. And then I am adding another one to the other end to attach to that middle key ring. So basically the two um, pieces on the end they're both going to share that middle key ring. Now I did have to pull this off camera right quick so that way I could actually see what I was doing. 
because these pieces are very very tiny and everything and I just wanted to make sure I got it in there and whatnot so yeah I got that fixed make sure that your chains are facing forward like when they are um, up against the wall and everything so make sure you have your orientation right as well so you see me adding on the jump ring on here using both pliers that I have here all right finally got that one on there all right perfect so you guys can kind of see what I was talking about as far as like turning that into a little loop and everything so now that's on there nice and flush and we're just going to repeat the same exact steps for the other side so just go ahead place that onto there close it on down uh -oh. see this is what I'm talking about these things are really small and they are very <laughs> difficult to work with on camera um, and try to make sure that you guys can see that I can see at the same time so what I'm doing is I'm just going to go off camera and get this handled right quick and we'll be right back all right so you want to go ahead and cut three pieces of the rhinestone chain two of them are exactly the same size so the two that I have on the edges those are exactly the same size and I also have the one longer piece in the middle so that way those are going to be what the charms themselves are going to rest on and dangle from so what we're going to do is we're going to be attaching each rhinestone chain to each key ring using a jump ring so after adding on the little cup chain claps onto each chain that's what we're going to be using to attach so when you do this middle piece make sure you do place the jump ring in between the two jump rings that are already there because it's connecting to the ones on the side and um, on the outside ones um, just make sure you kind of place it on the outside ring if that makes sense so that way you're able to make sure they dangle where you need them to dangle so from here go ahead and grab your jump rings and your charms these charms I was able to find they are very very cute they have like little rhinestone um, flowers in them and I just really loved how they look going with how I kind of designed the wall hanging the actual resin piece that is hanging from so I thought it matched very well this middle charm that I will be using this is actually an adorable little gold lotus flower so I really loved how that charm looked with this I feel like it is very zen and this is kind of the whole vibe here so yeah I got that one attached and then I'm just going to be adding on this other one it matches the other flower rhinestone charm and we're just getting those added on to the ends All right, so go ahead and clean up your pieces any extras that you do have you want to go ahead and put them into the respective bags but yes you want to make sure that everything dangles appropriately and all the chains are facing the correct orientation also be sure to spray her down with some alcohol and wipe down the front and then you're just gonna go ahead and flip her over right quick now off camera I did drill a hole into the middle uh, I've been having issues with this drill I did not feel like fighting with the camera and the drill so I just went ahead and put a hole directly in the middle um, I have already done a tutorial on how to drill holes through resin before so feel free to check any of those out um, from here I am just taking this little piece I have no idea what this is called but it turns um, any piece that you have into a wall hanging and adds this hook and I am just screwing this screw in using a miniature screwdriver all right so after you finish getting that piece screwed in this is what our baby looks like she is absolutely stunning like look at her just sitting perfectly on this wall i can see her in an office i can see her in someone's bedroom i can see her showing off in the living room just absolutely anywhere she could be in a doctor's office just kind of giving off those vibes like girl you're good here you're good here and i love how she has an afro because you know we're kind of not looked at with our afros and a lot of these um different molds and stuff with the etchings with women so i love how that's reflected 
look at how that glitter sits within that turquoise and everything i love how this white outline is etched in as well peep how these charms look on the end of these rhinestone chains i feel like these rhinestone chains just give it a a beautiful luxurious sparkle and it hits a whole lot different than the regular gold chains because like I feel like everyone is doing them now and I don't I haven't seen anyone do anything like this before so I'm just super excited super pumped if you guys love it too let me know below I love hearing from you guys feedback is a gift and until next time hippies bye now